Okay, we're going to look at how to find the x-intercept of a function. Um, it works um, the same way for all different kinds of functions. Um, we're going to look at a linear and then a quadratic example. So if I gave you negative 2 thirds x plus 7, so we're going to go into our graph, so into y equals, whatever's there, you can clear it out. So we're going to do negative, notice I'm using the negative, not the subtract, 2 thirds um, x. If you don't like your fractions like this, remember you can do alpha y equals, and then it looks like the fractions that you write on the paper, which is nice. Um, and then plus 7. Um, I'm going to hit zoom 6 so it goes back to our standard window. Um, so there is our graph. It looks like we're very on the edge, so I'm going to move my graph over a little bit so I can see. So I'm going to go to my window. I want to move right. The x max is to the right, so I'm just going to go to 15, and that should be sufficient. And it is. Okay. If we want to find the x-intercept, uh, we're going to calculate the x-intercept, so we're going to go here. Um, x-intercepts are known by several different names. You've got roots, solutions, zeros, x-intercepts, and factors. And you may or may not have got to that point in life where, you're, where you know all these things. Um, but this is why it's on the calculator menu here is a zero instead of an x-intercept. Um, so just know that all of these are essentially the same thing. Sometimes we write how we write it is slightly different. Um, but we want the x-intercept, so we're going to go find the x-intercept. Now it's asking me to be to the left of the x-intercept. So our x-intercept is here, so I want my cursor to be to the left of it. It is to the left of it. I like to go a little bit closer, otherwise it takes the calculator a little bit longer to calculate the x-intercept. So I like to be near it. So I'm near it, um, but I am definitely to the left of it. So I'm going to hit enter. And then uh, notice it puts an arrow, it marks where that spot is. And then it now is asking to go to the right, so I'm going to move over and hit enter. Um, and notice that between the arrows is where the x-intercept happens, so I'm going to hit enter. And then our x-intercept is 10.50, so um, then we can just write that our x-intercept is that. And that gives us what our x-intercept is. Now, if we had a different equation, um, we're going to look at a quadratic equation. So if we have f of x equals... Um, oh, I don't know where I went. We'll try this one. Negative 5x squared plus 2x minus 6. Okay, so negative 5x squared plus 2x minus 6. Oh, that's not going to work. That one work. Okay, so we'll do, I guess I forgot to write the one down that I was gonna use. Sorry about that. Okay, so here is our equation. Um, so we're gonna have that, um, I hit graph. On this one, we have two x-intercepts. If you are not liking, you can hit zoom six again and it will go back to the, like the nice looking one. Um, and if it bugs you that you can't see the bottom, you can go back to your window and say, hey, I need to go down a little bit further. So like negative 15. And you can have it so that you can see the whole graph, so you can see the min and the x-intercepts. All of it is great. Okay. So here we have two x-intercepts, so we want to find both of the x-intercepts. So here we can do 0. Now, um, you can move your cursor to the left, but I can also tell here, I know that this is 1, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. So I know that negative 4 is to the left of it. So rather than move my cursor, I can just hit negative 4 and then hit enter. And notice it puts an arrow where negative 4 is. And then I know that negative 3 is to the right of it, so I can hit negative 3 and then hit enter. Notice that between the two arrows is where the x-intercept happens. You can say guess, and you don't need to guess. So then you get this as your answer. So then your um, x-intercept would be negative 3 point, and then depending on where you're rounding to. So we'll round to two decimals, so 4, 8. And then now this part is in um, scientific notation. So this means that it's 2 times 10 to the negative 12, which means that you're doing, or sorry, negative 2. I think I forgot the negative. You're moving the decimal left 12 times, right? So it's 0 .00000, and then you've got 11 zeros and then a 2 which is really close to zero, so it's just gonna be zero. All right, so if you see with an E, that means that's your scientific notation, that's times 10 to whatever the power. If it's negative, it's gonna be really close to zero, so that you can just write zero. 
So that's the first zero, but I want the second one as well. So I'm gonna hit second calc again, and I'm gonna find the second zero. Um, I know that it's in between zero and one, or you can move your cursor. We didn't move our cursor last time. Again, to move your cursor quickly, you can hit second and then over. I went too far, so I'm gonna have to backtrack. You're usually, you're always just hitting the left and the right arrow buttons and over the up and the down. That's not gonna get you anywhere on your cursor. So I'm gonna hit enter and then I need to go to the right because it says right bound and then I'm gonna hit enter and then I'm gonna hit enter again. So then this zero is 0.48 when we round to two decimals and then that one gives us at zero. Okay. So that's how you find your x-intercepts and again, it works for all functions. It doesn't matter what the function is. We just did linear and quadratic on these ones, but it works for all of your functions.